Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the cool ways that you can create unique button styles using custom CSS in Squarespace. Now, a quick intro before we dive in. My name is Becca Harpain. I'm a Squarespace designer, Squarespace Circle member, a self-professed CSS super nerd, and founder of InsideTheSquare.co, a resource on all things CSS used by Squarespacers around the world. Now, I'm saying this term a lot, so I've got to mention this important legal information. The term Squarespace is a trademark of Squarespace Incorporated. This content is not affiliated with Squarespace Incorporated. So for this tutorial, we are covering a lot of interesting codes, so I made you a cheat sheet specific to these button styles. This is going to cover all the codes we're working with today, so you can use it to create your own unique button styles for your site. To download your free copy, head on over to insidethesquare.co slash button. And I'll head over to my demo site so we can get started with this tutorial. Now this might look a little bit different than what you're used to because today I'm actually using the interface for Squarespace 7.1. This is a new website building platform that they've been working with and some people are already using this on a regular basis, but I do want to mention that what we're covering today uh, these codes can be applied to Squarespace 7, so the usual stuff you're used to, like your Bedford or Brian templates, but these also work with Squarespace 7.1. Alrighty, so over here on the left-hand side, these are the codes we're going to be working with today, and I'll show you what these kind of change if you look at these buttons on the right-hand side. So these are standard for the site I'm using right now, and to add this as custom CSS, I'm going to go to the same space we always go to. Select Design and then scroll down to custom CSS. So right off the bat, the first one on our list here is to change the text color. I'm just gonna copy this right out of my site and paste it here into the custom CSS section. Now you'll see the text has been updated for that weird pinkish color, which actually looks terrible. Let's go ahead and change this just back to a solid white. <laughs> so if we wanna see the difference, uh, we can change this to any hex color code that we'd like. I'll go ahead and change it to a solid black so we can see again. This changes the text color of all of the button types. Now, let's say you wanna change the background color. You don't like that style so much. I'm just gonna copy this one here and paste it in the custom CSS section. And now you'll see they've all been updated to that peach color. We can also change the border color in style. There is a border breakdown in your cheat sheet that gets into all of your options here, but I'll just copy this one right off of the website here and add it so we can see what change that does. Alrighty. So again, this is covered in your cheat sheet, but the border we're working with here is solid and it's only one pixel in width. So you'll see just a small border around all of those buttons. If I change that one up to a five or even all the way up to a 15, I can give it as big of a border as I'd like. Now the code after that we have here is for a drop shadow. I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. This adds a pretty neat effect where you'll see now I actually have a little shadow going along with that button. So I'm actually gonna make this a little bit bigger, taking it up to five pixels in width so we can really see it stand out. So I'm gonna show you a super cool trick, one of the first animation tricks that I've ever done with CSS, and that was a button hover effect. When you're adding a hover effect to a button, it's gonna change how the button shows up when someone hovers over it with their cursor. Now you'll see it's gotten a little bit lighter when I do that, that's just the Squarespace standard, but we can make it do so much more. So if I want that box shadow to show up just when I hover my cursor over the button, I just add the little colon mark there and the word hover. And now you'll see that CSS code is applied as soon as I hover over any of my buttons. So all of this is great, but what if you want to apply something to just one button style? Let's say you only want medium buttons to be a different color and you'll leave small buttons and large buttons just where they are totally possible with custom CSS. I'm gonna grab this background color code here and I'll paste it into the custom CSS section, but to make it only apply to medium, right at the very end of this part of the code, I'm going to add two dashes and the word medium. And now you'll see just the medium button has had that code applied and small and large look just the same. And good news, it works for all three styles, so it's really easy to change it. If you want this to just apply to small buttons, change the text to small, or change the text to large, and it'll only apply to the large buttons. Pretty straightforward, right? 
This is especially important to know if you're using the 7.1 interface. You can no longer make changes to individual button styles in that interface. So you're going to need to use custom CSS to change small, medium, or large buttons separately. So again, that's starting with the SQS block button element. This works in all versions of Squarespace. But if you want to isolate just small, just medium, or just large, be sure to use those two dashes there. And no matter what style you go with, make sure you select save at the very end of editing the custom CSS. That's arguably the most important part of this entire tutorial. Alrighty, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you learned something awesome. Be sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube for a new tutorial every week. And don't forget to grab that free cheat sheet at insidethesquare.co slash button. Thanks again for watching and have fun with your Squarespace website. Have you heard? Squarespace 7.1 is now in early access. To learn more about this update and what that means for you, head on over to insidethesquare.co slash 7.1. And yes, everything you learned in this tutorial can totally be applied to a 7.1 website.